Hello there, Vector World. One and all, how are you today? Well, as you can see, we're going to make a cloud. Um, this is going to be built with nothing but simple shapes like circles and a rectangle. Um, so there'll be no pen tool work here whatsoever. And uh, we're going to use Pathfinder panel to merge all these shapes together. So to start off with, we'll make sure that we are working in the Your Shapes layer in the Layers panel. This file, like all the other draw workshops, will be available to download from the comment section. And uh, from here then, I will pick up my Ellipse tool. So if I click and hold down on the Rectangle tool, and in actual fact, I'm going to hover my cursor over the tear-off strip on the right-hand side in there. When I left-click on that, it turns them into a little floaty panel of tools. And then I'm going to start off, as I, as I mentioned a second ago, the Ellipse tool. Now click on that and then I'll use a keyboard shortcut just to zoom in nice and close to our cloud. So golden rule, get a good clear view of your artwork, pick the tool that you need and then we need to start creating um, versions of this cloud. So this is going to be built with four circles and a rectangle. Now in order to achieve that look, we will, uh, in this case, I'm going to switch to my uh, appearance in here and I'm going to turn off the fill uh, icon in there. So remove the fill from the objects we're going to draw. And then I'm going to click on the stroke in there and change that to black and then press return. So we have no fill, black stroke, because the black stroke is nice and contrasting. And then over here we have uh, the stroke weight. So if you um, didn't see the, the first workshop where we drew the bat symbol, then um, in that video, I was a little bit longer, but I talked through the process of how this file's built in the layers panel and the process of how we build these shapes in here in a little bit more detail. So from here then, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hover my cursor level with the white portion of the circle in the cloud template in here. And I'm gonna hover it here, level with the left edge, level with the top edge, just a rough approximation. I'll then click and hold down the left mouse button, keep it held down and drag. Now that will normally create an elliptical shape, but if you hold down the shift key at the same time, it gives you a perfect circle. And I can then let go of the mouse if I want to complete that shape. However, if you need to reposition the object, keeping, this is a tricky one, keep the shift key held down and the left mouse button. Um, you can hold down the space bar as well and you can move that shape around. So if I just move it up into that top left corner up there like so, then release just the space bar, keeping the shift key held down and the left mouse button. You can then increase and decrease that shape and it gets to be a little bit closer to what I want. I can let go of the mouse, then release the shift key on the keyboard. Uh, without um, exception, if you always release the left mouse button first and then release the keys on the keyboard, then it'll guarantee that we, in this case here, we get, for example, a perfect circle rather than an elliptical shape. With that now drawn, I can then switch to my selection tool. This object has no fill. So if I try and drag it here, it will deselect. You have to click back on this object. I will hover over actually the center point, which we do have, and I can then hold down the Alt key on the keyboard um, and then, uh, or the Option key on a Mac, and click and drag and create a duplicate to create the second circle in there. Let go of the mouse, let go of the Alt key. And again, from here, this will need to be a little bit bigger so I can hover my cursor over the bottom right, bottom left corner in here, hold down the shift key and just stretch it out a little bit in there and then go to the bottom right corner with the shift key still held down, click and drag, and make that a touch bigger. You can always sort of juxtapose these around by tapping the cursor keys in the keyboard as well. So I'm pretty much good with that. Again, I'll do the same thing. I hover my cursor over the center point, hold down the Alt key, Alt click and drag, and then I'll position that around about here, like so, where I think the middle of the circle is. Let go of the mouse, let go of the Alt key. Now this now, if I hover my cursor over one of the corners, I can hold down the Alt key and the Shift key, and you can pull that circle out and scale it up in all directions, which is really handy. So just scale that up a little bit. I might need to just let go of the mouse and the keys and the keyboard, nudge that down a touch, and then possibly hold down the Shift key and just pull that corner in there, like so. Just a little nudge in there like so so i'm all good with that i'm trying to basically fill in with shapes the white region on the inside having done that i'll go back to one of these smaller circles here click on that one hold down the alt key alt click and drag and then in this case if i hold down the shift key as well it will move that circle in the same plane same axis it'll not move it up or down if i drag the mouse left and right across the desk and that will make sure that it's perfectly in line with the original one on the far left hand side release the mouse release the shift and the alt key there. 
Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So that's all the kind of the curvy circles across the top of the cloud. I then need to switch to the uh, rectangle tool and I need to then hover my cursor around about here, not too high up. I want to keep this nice curvy edge across the top, but hover the start of my rectangle tool just here. Click and hold down the mouse and you can even actually get your, your rectangle tool level with the middle of that circle, which is perfect. Click and hold down the mouse, keep it held down, drag across, and you can drag right across the middle of the other circle on the far right hand side. Drag down, and then you should be able to snap to the bottom of those ellipses, like so. If you're not quite sure, pick up the zoom tool, zoom in, and then we can go to the view menu and choose the mode to outline. So we don't see the printable characteristics of the objects. We do still see the template in the background, and you can switch to the selection tool from here. And um, I will, in this case, just drag this around when you see it snapping here. So if I pull this back a little bit, when I click and drag and pull this back towards the middle, that is snapping to the middle of my circle. And the reason for this is we want to make sure we've got a lovely clean edge at the bottom. We don't want little circles bobbing down underneath the rectangle. We want all of these three shapes level in here. So you can move these in and out like so. Drag this back. There's actually a tiny little dot for the center in there. When you drag that over to where the dot is, that's when it will snap to the middle of the circle. Middle from left to right in there. And what we're trying to do is just fill this gap in here like so. If you want to be absolutely certain, then you can hover your selection tool underneath those shapes, click and drag across just the bottom two circles and the rectangle. When they're then selected, you can go to the align options, make sure it's set to align to selection, and then you can choose to align to bottom edges in there like so. If there's any slight movement on those, they've now been corrected. Click away from there, go to the view menu, choose preview, and then we get our shapes in there. Now, I do want to just take the stroke off this and swap this around now. So select all the shapes on the artboard here, four circles and the rectangle, and then I will remove the stroke, like so. And then I'll put a fill color in here so we can see it's nice and clearly. So I've got, um, let's go for red in here, like so. Notice that all of our objects overlap in some form or another with the null now selected, which is key. So you have to select what you want to affect with them all selected. Go to the uh, properties panel, which if it's not open on screen, you can go to window and then choose properties from there to open it up. And we have Pathfinder options. So here, this option will unite them. It will merge them all together. And what happens is when I click on unite, all of these shapes where they overlap, those overlapping regions will be removed and this will turn into one object. So click on unite. This is now one object like so. And um, we've lost all the overlapping regions. We can now turn this into one solid cloud. Remove the fill color and then go to the stroke and I will change the stroke in here to be black to start with nice and clear in there like so. Now to get the appearance that I want, I'm gonna to go to the stroke and um, pop out here, click on the word stroke. I'm going to change the stroke alignment to align the stroke to the outside of the object, like so. Press the return key to make the pop-up disappear. Go to the stroke weight and keep increasing the stroke weight. And it'll keep increasing and increasing until I match the template in there. So at 19, 19 points in there gives me my circle. If I then go to zoom out there, that's how you create a cloud shape without the use of the pen tool, but with starting off with basic shapes, merge them together with Pathfinder, and then in this case here, I chose for this example to have my stroke set to the outside of the object and then I increase the stroke weight to push it onto the outside. So that's how you make a cloud. Thanks for joining me, folks. And don't forget, if you want to see more content in the future, click on the subscribe button. And if you don't want to miss a single video from the Creative Frontiers channel, click on the alerts button and then you'll be notified whenever a new video is posted. Until next time, take care, folks.